Beyonce, and hip hop. Separately, these three words can be said most anywhere in the world and affect a widely understood awareness of mainstream culture. But to, in, um, together, they describe the outcomes of collaboration and innovation today. Globalized social networking and media platforms, accessible by the internet, are increasing the rate of ekphrasis, or art from art, as we explained to you earlier in our performance. This type of innovation, uh, this fast-paced innovation, is a dominating force in what drives popular millennial culture as of recent, and specifically the subculture that Funkonometry is a part of, urban dance. Today, my colleagues Rocco Luciano and Kyle Lemon and I are here to convey to you some of the really significant phenomena uh, experienced in arts innovation. We're forced to grapple with this question. In today's standard of clicking and liking and sharing, how can urban dance stay connected with its roots in the artistic community while still staying relevant in um, an era of fast-paced innovation and social media use? Um, and to give you some context, urban dance uh, developed out of decades of music, and performance and culture. Musically, the stylings of jazz and disco and funk and hip hop um, are the origins of the genre of origin. Uh, excuse me. These are the genres of origin that influenced their relative dance styles and simultaneously developed through industry to neighborhood street dance, to even ballroom and club culture. Everything from the Lindy Hop to the Hustle to popping and locking are part of a physical vocabulary of the urban dance genre. So that was musically. Culturally, these forms of dance and music emerged um, in solidarity of communities looking to express things like individuality, um, to collaboration, to creativity, uh, but most importantly, countercultural ideas. So fundamentally, urban dance is influenced both by social dancing, but also by a commitment to freedom of artistic expression and freedom of artistic experimentation. Years of all of this passed down through oral history, through physical practice, and through a geographically reliant exchange of style and ideas, ultimately led to where the urban dance community was in 2005. And then enter YouTube. With the development of these social media platforms like Facebook and YouTube, um, the way that artists and creative leaders and their audiences interact with information is so different than before. This excess of access definitely has its downsides in an art community, but ultimately I think it's a really great thing. When I entered this dance community, um, the only way that music and movement uh, were developed you know, was through real life personal interactions, you know, in real life, or IRL as we call it now. Groups of friends and neighbors would make music together, um, uh, you know, exchange stories, uh, choreograph and dance in garages and share ideas, and, and then those ideas uh, ripple out and permeate through the greater community um, through more face-to-face -face personal interaction. Now it's a little different, right? Um, the art is still fundamentally based upon community, but now you have dancers in New York with access to what a choreographer is doing in Paris or what a dance company is doing in Japan. And um, that physical experience is removed. Um, 
but now there's this opportunity to innovate in a way that's more, faster, better, to quote Professor David Levy. However, um, this increased access definitely leaves our uh, culture in a vulnerable place, vulnerable to uh, one, misappropriation, and two, fleeting attention. A lack of attention could lead to a lack of investment and a lack of appreciation. In a time where you can um, see a video on YouTube, a dance video, and then just rip it and copy it, um, uh, you, you definitely get removed from the experience and, and then it's on to the next best thing. Referring back to our performance that you just saw, um, art changes hands more quickly now. Um, I found those uh, covers of Beyonce by the boys from Superfruit and Todrick Hall just by being an active participant in the YouTube community. And, and discovering that music, digitally or not, um, I was able to make more art from that, you know, share it with my dance company, and then we're able to entertain people um, with art that means something to me. Lastly, uh, community dancers have penetrated the industry, the entertainment industry, by utilizing social media. Uh, dancers and their work are discovered through their videos posted on YouTube, and then um, they find these really, really amazing opportunities. Um, that's different than before. Um, before, you definitely needed to um, live in a certain location and, and have a very particular uh, network. This new landscape has allowed the urban dance community to thrive because now there are more dancers taking class, there are more people starting creative projects, um, our movement, our dancers have entered the mainstream media, and everything from class coverage to showcases to conceptual and artistic videos are all available online for everyone. That's amazing. Hello, I'm Kyle, and I'm here to talk about urban dance, the hopeful future for it, and our message that we have for our future generations. So urban dance is a huge part of how the youth, especially in the inner cities, find a strong sense of self and identity and come into their own. I know growing up, me and my peers, we were heavily influenced by uh, music videos and musical theater and film, and as I got older, even club culture. But I think if you were to ask any new upcoming dancer or a new uh, millennial dancer how they got started, you're most likely going to get the answer, YouTube. There is a beauty in this, uh, but there's also a catch. Our message to future generations one we have cultivated ourselves through experience and from our mentors and rigorous training, is to be careful of misappropriating a culture that has already succumbed to the fleeting and spontaneous reality of social media and the internet. We urge young people and future generations of dancers and non-dancers alike to search for authenticity in everything they create, all of their work to be excited, genuinely excited about the resources that we all have at our disposal now. I, I want all of you guys to educate yourselves and invest all of your time if you can, as much as possible, and take advantage of the incredible access that we have with technology nowadays. Part of the survival today with regards to urban dance is taking ownership of how it redefines concepts like success, lifestyles and community. This has laid a path of options for future generations to not necessarily abide by the humdrum nine to five. We can make our own schedules now. We can curate a more interesting and colorful world for all of the young people. And if they're hungry enough, YouTube and social media gives them just a taste of what this future can be. Our community's existence has been redefined by the ease of access, we all know, with Vine and uh, Snapchat even, and just bits get smaller and smaller and smaller, and you're just gonna have flashes of people just on an eyelid kind of app or something. And now we're harnessed uh, with what we have with this amassed social media presence. 
what was once inspired by literature and poetry or even paintings, going out to a museum, being there, being tactile and touching what inspires us, now there's this new emergence of really communal, cross-mixed mixed musical genres, like alt, folk, rock, pop, trip, hop, dibby, scooby dee bop Now we have urban uh, dance innovation, and it inspires musical covers. Uh, Mac Dre can sample Joni Mitchell, open up a whole avenue to folk music. Uh, Janet Jackson can sample Carly Simon. Um, Rihanna and Kanye collaborate with Paul McCartney, and diehard Kanye fans Twitter angrily, who is that old man in the background? Inform yourselves, people. Ekphrasis and art innovation feel like they're moving at the speed of light. Things are so ad nauseum, we try and skip ads that can't even get shorter and shorter. Uh, we That's how it's going to be when you watch this video back on YouTube. You're just going to skip to the fun parts. Does he, do, does he trip? Does he do something shocking? Is he going to dance some more? How, how long is our attention span going to be? I mean, it is important to understand that what goes on behind the scenes within a culture, what really is fundamental to it, it it's prominent in urban areas now. It's what occupies dominant po popular culture. Dance is such a, a visceral and, and real form of communication when we can't use our words. We, on our dance team, we have people from other nations even, and we have that common interest and way to speak to each other. For ju future generations, it's super important that they understand how this ultimate, ultimately affects all of our lives and how it changes our lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.